Hey guys, happy Earth Day. I hope that you guys saw the read aloud that I posted for you and that if you have some extra time or you want to, you'll go on our website and check out some of the cool activities that I posted for you guys. Um, today we're going to be starting our solar system unit for the next two weeks and I'm so excited because I know you guys love this unit so, so much. Um, so we're going to start and we're just going to kind of review a few things about the solar system and then I'll explain to you what your assignments are for today. So remember that we can um, think about our um, planet order using that phrase that we practiced. My very educated mother just served us, now this one says nachos, but I always told you guys noodles. Whatever helps you remember it is totally fine. Okay, so my very educated mother just served us nachos or noodles. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And let's see, pop quiz. Can you remember what this little part is right here that divides the inner and the outer planets? It's the asteroid belt. So um, we learned about that in our, our magic school bus video whenever they were traveling to each of the planets. This little line right here goes all the way around and it separates all of the planets from each other. Now remember, in actual outer space, our planets aren't all lined up like this. They're all going around the Earth, at the Earth, going around the sun at their own pace. But we just line them up like this so that you can see their distance from the sun. So some facts about the sun, Earth, and the moon. So the sun rotates on an axis. So let's pause for a second and talk about what it means to rotate versus revolve. So if it's rotating, it's spinning or it's turning, okay, like this. It takes 24 hours or one day for the earth to rotate. That's when it's just turning, okay? The, um, the causes from that are that we have day and night, okay? Because if here is the sun, okay, the earth is turning like this. So you would see the sun and then you wouldn't see the sun and then you'd see the sun and then you wouldn't see the sun. Okay, whenever it's revolving, that's when it's going around it. So if this is the sun, here is the earth going around like this. That takes 365 days or one year. And that causes us to have seasons because during some points of that, we may be closer to the sun or further from the sun because it's not a perfect circle when it goes around. Okay, so it's turning and it's going around. So it's rotating while it is revolving. Okay, kind of confusing. I wish that I had my planet stuff here to show you. That would make things so much easier. So, um, the sun rotates on an axis. So, the sun is turning on its own. It's a source of heat and light for our solar system. It's a medium-sized star. So, even as big as the sun is, it's still only a medium-sized star. Sphere of burning gas. So, remember, a sphere is a ball shape. And it is just a, a big, giant ball of burning gas. It's a million times bigger than the Earth. It doesn't really have a surface, it's just gas, okay? So like any other type of gas that we've talked about, like picture um, picture the smoke above your campfire. It doesn't really have a surface like the earth does or like this table does. If I were to touch the smoke, I don't really like feel anything. Like I can't really grab it very well. It doesn't have a real surface. And the temperature on the sun is 5,600 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what, how much that is in Fahrenheit. Let me look it up real quick. Woo, that's 10,112 degrees Fahrenheit. Good grief, that is hot. All right, the Earth, it's the third planet from the sun. It is four times larger than the moon. And it rotates every 24 hours on an axis. So that's how you can remember um, that that's talking about when it's just spinning for a day. Okay, every time it spins and it gets back to where it originally started, that's 24 hours. It has water and an atmosphere and it has life on it. We have plants and living things. And as far as we know, this is the only planet to support life. It's the only planet that has the water and the food that we need and is the right temperature for us to be able to survive. And it has air that we can breathe. It's a sphere, just like the sun, but it's a sphere of rock. So it actually does have a surface. Now you might be thinking, well, it's not all rock. Part of it's water. Well, underneath that water, way down under there, it is still rock. And the moon, it's a sphere of rock as well. It has no atmosphere, no life, and its surface is scarred and cratered. So think about what would have caused that surface to be scarred and cratered. 
What is flying around through space that could have made that happen? Right, it was all the meteor meteors and things like that that would have crashed into it and the asteroids. So once those things hit it, it has such an impact that it creates those craters in it. It has a natural satellite. I am not actually sure what that means. Let me look that up real quick. Moon, natural satellite. What in the world does that mean? Oh, it just means that it naturally orbits the Earth. Hmm, I didn't know that. Oh, it is a natural satellite. That's what it's saying. Okay, I get it now. So whenever we send a satellite out into space, um, it goes and it like flies around and it orbits the earth and things like that to tell us more about the earth and outer space. That's a man-made satellite. The moon is a natural satellite because it's already in space naturally and it goes around the earth. No one sent it out there to do that. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So I guess I learned something too. It takes 29 days for the earth, for the moon to revolve around the earth. Remember revolve is when it goes around and it orbits the earth. So it's orbit is just the path that it takes to go around. All right, so there are a couple of brain pop videos that you guys can watch that will kind of um, hopefully explain it a little bit better than I did <laughs> about outer space. And there's a couple of YouTube videos as well. And your assignments for today, um, one of them is a kind of a really fun one, I think. Create your own planet. So you're going to get to create um, a planet based on all these different characteristics any way that you want. So you'll have to think of a name for your planet. Um, you'll have to think, does your planet have a ring? And you'll circle yes or no. Okay. Then you're going to draw and color a picture of your planet. Don't forget, if you circled no, your planet can't have rings. If you want it to have rings, circle yes and draw them on there. How many moons are on your planet? So like Earth has one moon. So how many moons do you want your planet to have? How big is your planet? Small, medium, or large? Some fun facts about your planet, like what makes it unique or interesting or different from the other planets. What would you want people to know if they Googled it? How far is your planet from the sun? Remember, that's probably going to be measured in miles. And just for reference, the Earth, how, let's see, how far is the Earth from the sun. Okay, the Earth is 93.452 million miles from the sun. So this is probably going to be a really big number, just so you know. Um, what is the speed of your planet's orbit around the sun? Okay, so this is going to be like how long will the year be on your planet? So remember, it takes Earth 365 days to get around the sun. So how long do you want it to take your planet? You want it to be slower than that or faster than that to get all the way around the sun? Did y'all hear that thunder? Oh my goodness. That was intense. All right. What is the weather like? Conveniently, as it thunders and rains here. <laughs> so what's the weather on your planet going to be like? Is it going to rain? Is it going to be foggy? Is it going to be icy? Uh, is it clear? Is, are there clouds? What's the temperature going to be like? You're going to circle cold or hot. And then lastly, you're going to tell me who lives on your planet. I know Carson already turned hers in and she said that dogs and squirrels are going to live on her planet. So don't feel like you can't be creative. This is your planet. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And then let's see. The last thing that you guys are going to do is you're going to um, choose any one choice from the solar system choice board. So let me go through and explain to you what these um, are going to ask of you for each one so that you can know what to pick. So number one says starry stories. Create a constellation and then write a myth explaining the origin of your starry pattern. So if you look in your, if you look ahead in your packet, this is the page for next week. Um, you're gonna basically, right now if you choose this one, you're gonna create your own constellation. So it would be kind of like that. Let me show you kind of what that would look like. Cause I know some of you may not have seen too many constellations. Okay, so like these are some common constellations in the sky. So what that means is like they just drew a picture, like connect the dots using the, star, using the stars that are in the sky. So um, like if we look at this one, Leo, this is supposedly a lion. To me, that does not look like a lion. However, apparently to somebody at some point, it did. 
So you are just going to um, create your own. So like draw you some dot little stars and then connect all the stars the way you want to and then give it a name and then write a myth explaining the origin of your starry pattern. So if you're not really sure on that, you might want to YouTube um, some constellation myths and get some inspiration from those. A myth, remember, is just a made-up story explaining, like, how something got there. Y'all, this thunder is getting intense. All right, number two, colonizing the moon. Write a journal entry from the perspective of a person who just moved to the moon. Be sure to write about how life on the moon is different from life on Earth. The things that are harder to do on the moon and the most exciting parts about living on the moon. So basically, it could be like your journal entry. So like, imagine that you just moved to the moon and how that's going to be for you. What it's like on there, how it's different from Earth, what's hard to do because there's no, there's no gravity, and what you love the most about it. Number three says galactic poems. Write a poem or song that includes at least three of the following vocabulary words. Star, solar system, constellation, moon, planet, orbit. Number four, a planet is born. Design a newly discovered planet. Complete the fact, the planet fact sheet included in your packet to teach others about your new planet. So that's the one that you guys are going to be um, already having to complete today. Okay, so that's this page. So we're going to go ahead and put a check by that one. That way you know you're going to do that one today. And I'm just going to write so you remember week five. Task number five says, out of this world vocabulary. Define, illustrate, and write a sentence for each of the following vocabulary words. So you might want to get like some task cards, I mean some uh, index cards, or you can do it on a piece of paper. Um, but you're going to look up the definition for each one of these. Um, or you can, yeah, I would say probably look it up, unless you're like absolutely sure you know the definition. But I would look it up just to double check and to get some spelling help. And then illustrate, so draw a picture of each word, and then write a sentence for each of the words. Um, number six, rotation versus revolution. Write a letter to a student in another class explaining the difference between rotation and revolution. And I will post this in our group and on our um, Google site. That way you can use this to help you explain it. Um, number seven says exploring the solar system. Pick one of the eight planets to learn more about. Create a poster, flyer, or PowerPoint presentation on this planet. So basically, you're going to do some research on any planet that you want that's in our solar system. And you're going to create a poster, flyer, or PowerPoint to give me some interesting facts about it. You might draw a picture of it, um, but you want it to be factual. So this is not writing a story that you make up about it. This is giving me actual facts that are true. Task number eight, moving shadows. Create a poster explaining how shadows are formed by the relationship between the sun and the earth. So that's kind of um, like a challenge, I feel like, because this isn't one that we've really talked about. This would be one that you really have to think about and use those critical thinking skills. So um, basically think about how, how do we have shadows? Like, what does that mean? How do shadows happen? What causes that? And then you're going to create a poster. So you might have to do some Googling on this one, or you might already be able to picture in your head how we have shadows. You're going to make a poster explaining that. I would definitely draw some pictures to help you explain that part. You might even take some pictures and print them out and put them on your poster. Task number nine is planet getaway. Design a postcard for one of the eight planets in our solar system. Be sure to include an illustration, at least three reasons to visit the planet, and how far it is from the sun. And so whenever you're making a postcard, um, remember that most postcards, well, all postcards, have a front and a back. And so let me kind of show you the layout of a postcard. Wow, it's like I forgot how to fold today. Okay. All right, so now that I've got this folded, so the layout of a postcard is that you've got your picture on the front of one of your eight planets, um, however you want to draw your picture, but your big picture goes here. Okay, this is the decorated side. And then when you flip it over, your postcard is divided in half. This is the part for your stamp up here in the corner. So you could decorate your own stamp however you wanted. Um, and then this part, let me see, just so it's been a while since I've looked at one postcard. 
Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. So um, you're going to have this part that you would draw some lines on. That way the person could put the address there. And then on this side, this is where you can like write your message and things like that. So remember it said to include at least three reasons to visit the planet and how far it is from the sun. You can include those on the front or the back. That's up to you. If it were me, I would probably go say something persuasive about like um, reasons why you should come visit Neptune. And then I would have my three reasons here. And then I might even just be like delivered um, all the way from Neptune. Um, 46 billion miles. That is not at all accurate. But you don't include how far it is from the sun somehow on your postcard. Okay, so your picture goes on one side. Make this as beautiful as you want. And then this is like your information side. You can even look up um, a postcard template on Google if you want to like print one out and decorate it from that. Or you can just draw your own. So that is um, all of your science stuff for today and your explanation explanation of your choice board. So I hope you guys have fun with this one. I know you guys love planets. It's really fun to learn about that. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.